Good afternoon, everyone. You should be able to hear me uh, in just about a minute or so. We'll click on the video and we'll get going. We've got a lot of people still coming into the to the webinar this afternoon, but welcome. Welcome to everyone. So it's great to uh, great to be here again. We're going to still give you a minute or two. We the folks are still uh, rolling into the webinar, and probably we'll do that for the next minute or two. But uh, <clears throat> as I've been watching you all come in and say hello, it's really gratifying to see um, lots of friends and lots of school districts and lots of folks that we know from around the country. Uh, Arizona, Glendale Schools, Florida, Levy County. A shout out to Levy County. I see that you're here in Georgia, Clayton County, in Bibb County, down near Macon, Georgia, welcome. Um, also, uh, North Dakota friends, welcome. North Carolina, New York, uh, welcome to uh, my friends from all the way up north in Potsdam, especially Brother Roman. I think he's here with us today as well. And, and a lot of friends from Virginia, Spotsylvania County, Virginia Beach, Suffolk, Fredericksburg, uh, Ches uh, Chesterfield County, I'm probably gonna miss some, but it's just really gratifying to see. Friends from West Virginia, Louisiana, Webster Parish, woo-hoo, my friends in Webster are here. Uh, Mississippi, my friends from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Hi, Nancy, I think you're here today as well. Nor uh, Viva Las Vegas uh, from Nevada, California, Washington State, Washington, D.C. So it really is uh, uh, thrilling to see all of you here uh, and to all of my new friends, and if I've missed missed you in the in the chat. Um, they roll in pretty fast, so I caught as many as I could catch. Uh, I'm going to give it about a minute um, because we still have a, a good number of folks, I think, uh, trying to log in. We should have plenty of room now. We had some, we had maximized, maxed out our seating the last time, so we um, increased our capacity so everybody who would like to participate in the live webinar has an opportunity to do that. So let me just give it about 30 seconds or so and see where we're at and we'll get going. So it looks like it's uh, slowing down a little bit and uh, let's get going because we have a lot that I would really like to accomplish today uh, in terms of this topic of family academic socialization. Uh, honestly, after I decided to do this webinar, I then had this thought, gee, is this, is this too much for an hour? Uh, can we possibly get to it? So we'll see how I do. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts in today's presentation. And so what I'm going to try to do is, is make it succinct as possible and also to make the connections like we always do, uh, try to do at least, with uh, practice, good practice, give you a little bit of background about it and then show you how it might look uh, and, and why it's important. So we can, we can go ahead and, and get started. Once again, um, it's going to be, it's very difficult with having hundreds of you uh, on the webinar to answer any specific questions you might put in the chat. Um, if you do have questions, please feel free to email me. You can find me at steve at drsteveconstantino.com. You can direct message me on Twitter. Also, feel free to take uh, telephone pictures and tweet out anything you want today, anything that strikes you as something uh, you'd like your friends to know. We have, uh, we're just trying to get this information out to as many people as possible. So we appreciate your help in doing that as well. And then later in the presentation, we're going to take a quick visit to the website because I wanted to show you a couple of things that you might be interested in uh, before we sign off today uh, at three o'clock. I'm going to remind you, if you've been uh, coming to our webinars, you know that all of our work is based on the model that I created uh, called the Five Simple Principles to Engage Every Family. Uh, the book on this model was published in 2015, and you'll see on the left-hand side of your screen a copy of the logic model that we use 
when we work in implementing family engagement best practices in schools and districts around the country and around the world. Really happy to let you know if you if this is your first time with us, uh, you've already heard this if it's not, but if this is your first time with us, very happy to, to let you know that the second edition of Engage Every Family will be coming out in September. And you'll see a subtle change to the logic model in addition to changing some of the colors um, and some of the fonts to make it a little bit easier to read. Uh, we've made two significant changes based on research and feedback that we have gotten since uh, implementing this work in 2015. One is to look at developing relationships a little bit more importantly. And then really in the third section of this model um, <clears throat> is where we talk about building family efficacy. And there's a connection to that today as well. Uh, and so you can see that the logic model has a logic to it. Uh, it moves in a clockwise fashion from number one through number five. We certainly aren't going to get to all of that today, but I wanted you to know where all of this information um, comes from. Most of the information comes from. And of course, at the end of today, because I have used some research to make some points, I'm also providing you a reference list of the research. So if you have any interest in going and looking at it, you certainly can do that as well. We're gonna live in these three areas today. Um, a little bit of number one, a little bit of culture. We have to think about what we think. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about communication and relationships and what that needs to look like, how that all feeds into efficacy and this notion of academic socialization. Um, sometimes when we are getting into involved with family engagement, improving family engagement, our desire to engage more families, the frustration sometimes we feel by the fact that we can't successfully engage every family. A lot of times I'll have people go back to the beginning and start with their core beliefs and their core values. I'm gonna share some things with you today that you can take with you, uh, that you can think about and you can talk with your colleagues about because really the beginning of good family engagement practice, people say, you know, where do you start? And I often will point to my forehead and say, start right here. What do you think about it? What do you believe about it? Do you value? the engagement of every family? Um, I think those are important questions that we ask ourselves. We need to delineate between one-way and two-way communication, of course, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the role of trust and family efficacy, and then how all of this can really be uh, streamlined into this notion of academic socialization. Since the beginning of the COVID emergency, um, I've been having, well, like you, uh, not going anywhere. So I've had a lot of time to think about things and I've got a lot of time um, uh, to also work. I've got a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls, uh, communications from all kinds of organizations. And so about a month ago, uh, we thought about these six considerations as we got into COVID-19, as we got into this whole notion of turning, flipping school around and having students learn in home and having parents become surrogate teachers. Um, today, you'll see two of them for today, I've highlighted in a different color because we're gonna live there uh, for a, a bit today. And that is, how do we give families an active role in learning and what does that mean? And how does that uh, compare to this notion of academic socialization? And then consider the role of the teacher um, shifting to a coach where, you are working on helping your surrogate teachers do the very best that they can in your absence because you can't physically be with the students that you cherish at the moment. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that and we'll do our very best in a very short period of time today to try to connect all of those ideas. But I wanted to really reference back to some of the things that we had talked about before. So I'm gonna start with um, a multiple choice question. And, um, I'd like you to take a look at the question, the percentage of families who are apathetic to their children's education uh, is. We unfortunately know that there are a percentage of families who are apathetic. And uh, it's, I wish I didn't have to say that, uh, but there are. The question is, what's the percentage? And this is a really actually a very interesting question to ask um, your colleagues and friends and all the folks associated with your school or your district. And, so everyone is now looking at my question and they're thinking about which answer that they would select. So you get an answer in your head, what you think is right. And now I'll give you the correct answer. It's about 1%. 
Um, generally, when we ask audiences that question, there are a significant number, and it changes from place to place, but there are a significant number of people who say, well, it must be higher. It must be 10%. Some people have even said, well, it's got to be 19%. It's over 19%. Those answers are really based on experiences that we have with disengagement in schools, less on research and more on experience. And so it seems to me that if we, we really want to capture engaging more families, then what we have to do is make better experiences happen uh, for teachers and families and kids. And that's really where this notion of socialization comes in. I'm going to ask you to think about a couple of things today. I'm going to put up a couple of questions and uh, um, we can see uh, what you think about them. Often when I have the opportunity to work with a group of people, I start by asking them to reflect on a few questions. <clears throat> You'll also find these, we use these questions uh, a lot in the book and we also use them in workshops. And, and if you've been in one of our workshops, chances are you've seen these questions before. But it's really a moment where you stop and think about what do you really think about family engagement? Do you believe that every family uh, can be involved or wishes to be involved? Um, do you believe that it's important to engage every family of every child that you work with? Uh, later in this presentation, I'll go over what I refer to as the seven big ideas, and we'll talk a little bit about, about that very notion. So the first question I'd like you to ponder is what you think about family engagement. Second question, will it work? Do you think it'll work? Really? Uh, do, you have, do you have doubts? Are you skeptical that the idea of family engagement um, is, is, a, a, is going to work? Um, it's okay because lots of people do. So we have to ask ourselves, do we believe that family engagement is worth any amount of effort uh, if it means academic improvement for kids? Next question. If I think it's important, then what do you think your role is? Um, what do you think uh, is um important for you to undertake if we want family engagement to become part of the fabric of your school or your district. And then lastly, am I willing to change what I think and do to promote better family engagement? These are four questions that at the beginning of the work on understanding our culture, a culture that engages every family, these are four critical questions. And, and the reason I'm sharing them with you today is because I, I'm hoping that this will make sense as we go through and we get to the academic socialization portion of this, of this presentation. I th I'm hoping you can reflect back on what you think about these questions. Now, chances are that a lot of you who have tuned in today are family engagement specialists, uh, teachers who work um, diligently with families. And so it's possible that we have a lot of people on the webinar today who understand and appreciate and want better family engagement. But we also know that that's not really um, on everybody's short list of priorities. And so one of the things that we know to bring about effective change is the degree to which we can bring continuity to engaging families in schools. So if a couple of teachers really think it's a great idea and a couple of teachers might not think it's a great idea, uh, we had this inconsistency and that that can cause confusion amongst families and that can actually start to attribute to um, disengaged families and their and their continued disengagement. I want to talk a little bit about culture um, because I think this is a big piece of of understanding how you can promote academic socialization. <clears throat> the, you're the culture of your organization, what you collectively believe, what you collectively value, how the organization feels, how the organization acts, how the organization reacts, the relationships between people in an organization, all of those things are critically important when we talk about family academic socialization and family engagement at large. One of the things we know is that talking about the culture of our organization is not among our daily thoughts. 
Uh, we don't get up every day and spend time thinking about, you know, the culture system that we have in place. Uh, I often, you know, my teacher and principal friends, you get up in the morning, you race into school, you set your hair on fire, you run around for 9, 10, 11, or 12 hours, and uh, you do it all again the next day. So there's not a lot of time, really, to think about culture. We move through the day um, very similarly uh, when school was in session. What I think has thrown the biggest, the, the biggest uh, wedge that has been thrown into us since COVID is that we are having a hard time establishing routines. Um, we thrive on those routines and now we're, it's a little bit difficult for us. Uh, everybody in the organization can see nuances in the organization. But when you give a cursory look at an organization, um, you can often miss the details. And when you look at it more closely, you can see that there may be things in the organization that you can change, some cultural things that you can change that will bring about a better result. And that's one of the reasons why I bring it up today. So let's talk about um, these big ideas. I want to start by saying uh, the, the seven big ideas is something that I have written about. Um, matter of fact, I think I wrote about it in a recent blog. And you'll often hear me talk about the seven big ideas um, if we have an opportunity to work together. Uh, they, this is not meant to be a comprehensive list of ideas. These are seven truths, if you will, seven, seven things we absolutely know to be true that when we can fire on all of these seven things, we can start to see uh, the goals uh, that we'll talk about today in terms of socializing families to their child's academic life. So let's start, number one. You've heard me say this a million times. If you've been on the webinars before, you've heard me say it before, and you'll continue to hear me say it uh, forever. And that is families are the first and most influential teachers of their children. <clears throat> if that wasn't true before, it certainly is true now. Consider for a moment that families are dictating the how, why, what, and when of learning. Um, and I think it's critically important that we understand that it has always been that their influence uh, far exceeds ours. I've asked teachers across the country and usually get a head nod when I say, how many teachers have spent a day or days teaching a concept only to have maybe a student tell you that a parent has undone that concept relatively, relatively quickly. Um, I saw something on the internet the other day or a, uh, it was a, a meme uh, that the kid said uh, something to the effect of, um, uh, my dad thinks new math is stupid. And uh, while we get a chuckle out of that, we're going to take that phrase and think about it for a minute because that really gives us a window into this notion of socialization to academics. So this influence is critical. Big idea number two. We're really good at engaging the already engaged. And the same thing is happening to us now that we are doing everything remotely. Um, we still have, we always have had parents who have been engaged with their children's education. Um, and we've always had parents who have been disengaged with their children's education. I don't have any data at the moment to share with you as to whether or not that has changed as a result of the COVID-19 um, emergency. My hypothesis is, my guess is that it hasn't changed, that the engaged families are still trying to be as engaged as possible although there are new complications in their lives. And the disengaged folks may feel even further disenfranchised. Uh, they may feel even further, uh, even more inept, uh, that they don't think they have the skills, they don't think they have the ability to help their kids. And as a result, their disengagement could actually worsen. Those are all theories. I don't have any data. We hope that as, as we move through this, we'll be doing some research and collecting some data and learning some things. As a matter of fact, our next webinar next week uh, is gonna feature some folks from schools and districts who are actually doing the work and giving us some feedback about uh, what's working with them and, and what's not working for them. So understanding about the engaging, the already engaged. Number three, um, you've heard me say this a hundred times, you'll continue to hear me say it, Family engagement is not about doing more, it's about doing what we already do, only differently. I think that if, you know, if we're going to create opportunities for kids to learn um, via remotely, 
we can still create those opportunities and engage families and also promote academic socialization. We'll talk about that. Number four, family engagement is a process, not an event. Um, when school was in session, we often look at family engagement as events. Um, you know, uh, we can, at the elementary level, sometimes perhaps we have math night or language arts night. Uh, at the middle or high school level, we might have science night or we might have financial aid night or college night or back to school night. There's all kinds of things that schools do. And often when we are trying to improve family engagement, we look at raising the percentage of people who attend those events as indicators of improved family engagement. I'm not so sure that those are the best indicators to use because we understand the reason why, for example, the logic model is in a clockwise circle is because there is a process to it. There is a place, there are things that have to occur before other things occur. And so understanding, I think those differences will help us when we get when we dive off the diving board in a few minutes into the pool of academic socialization. Number five, relationships with families that are disengaged must lead to increased family efficacy. We're going to remind you, if you've not been on our web, uh, webinars before, to spend just a minute reviewing efficacy because we've talked about that a couple of times already. Um, but if we're going to take the time to reach and try to build trusting relationships with disengaged families, and trust is the big issue, um, fear is another issue. But if we can, if we can regain that trust and we can move away from some of the fears that families have, some of the fears that we have, quite frankly, um, we can get to the point where we can promote their efficacy. If we don't do that, then then building that relationship and trust is probably not going to get us anywhere. Um, it, it may make things nicer, but in the end, I don't know that it can speak directly to the learning life of a child. So we're always having a goal in mind. I always say to folks, engaging families for the sake of engaging families is a nice thing to do, but let's engage them for a purpose. And that purpose should always be to improve whatever learning or social emotional outcomes we're trying to, uh, we're trying to impact. I don't think that there's anyone listening to this webinar who doesn't know this. Um, there has always been a direct correlation between students who are struggling in school and the relative engagement or disengagement of their families. It is especially true with disengaged families and students who are struggling. There, there's consider a line that goes right through uh, and connects those two ideas. So we spend a lot of our time in schools and in education looking at ways that we can impact learning so that we can improve learning. My suggestion is that we, if we looked at impact ways, to, if we could impact ways to uh, promote better engagement, that better engagement would start to create better learning. Um, there's an old, the old, you know the old saying, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. And so what we're gonna do today in this academic socialization conversation is talk about how we can do that on the family side. And lastly, I'm pleased that you're at this. Our purpose for doing this webinar, these webinars, um, is to be helpful during a very, very difficult time, but also to expand your capacity, to expand your capacity in family engagement, or so you can help others expand their capacity in family engagement. Because we, if we don't, if we don't help teachers and administrators and counselors and support staff understand the importance of family engagement, then the culture, the culture of that organization is very strong and it'll snap back to the way it was. And what we wanna do is we want to get some kind of momentum going, the tipping point as Malcolm Gladwell will say, so that that culture changes, so that family engagement um, perhaps has an elevated status in the organization from where it is today. So I share those seven ideas because they all bleed, somehow feed into this concept that we're going to be talking about today with regard to um, academic socialization. So let's get started. The reminder is here. We've talked about this before. If you're brand new to us today, um, please know that all of our webinars, are, as soon as our webinars are done, we upload them and we put them on our website for free. Uh, and, and they are available to you to watch and share and do anything you wish. So we encourage you to do that. 
Um, if you've not been at one of our webinars, if you want to go back and watch a couple of them, there'll be more conversation about this topic of efficacy. But I wanted to remind everyone that efficacy is the power for one or many to produce an effect on a desired result. And once again, I'm going to focus you on that third bullet. We have to get families to believe, however, that their skills and abilities are suitable to making this happen. And we're going to start there. So how do you do that? What's What's the trick to uh, helping families uh, make that leap from where they are to where they need to be? You've seen me say this before. Again, I just wanted to reshare this uh, <clears throat> in terms of context for our discussion. So we've talked about culture. We've talked about the seven ideas. We've talked about that we've set the stage for this conversation for academic socialization. It's interesting to me um, that we are all practicing, we, since the beginning of the COVID um, emergency, we've all been now introduced to this phrase, um, social distancing. And it occurred to me when I was working on pr making this presentation for you today, um, why, why are we calling it social distancing? And does that have any impact on socialization of people? One person uh, has suggested that maybe we should call this physical distancing because unlike 1918, we have technology that is doing everything in its power to keep us together. Technology is allowing us to have this conversation. Uh, technology, you know, people are having birthday parties and weddings and all kinds of events via uh, the internet. Uh, so keep that idea of socialization in mind. What is socialization? Learning and behaving with others at a man, in, a, in an acceptable manner. Look at number two, internalizing norms and ideologies. We go back to those questions about family engagement. We go back to the beliefs and the values of the organization because those beliefs and the values, they um, show themselves in how we conduct ourselves, how we conduct the organization, the rules and um uh, the policies, procedures, and practices of an organization, and the ideology of an organization. And does it speak to family engagement or does it not? Uh, socialization encompasses both learning and teaching, and socialization is connected to developmental psychology. That's where the term socialization comes from. Now let's see if we can um, add it to families. Family academic socialization really comes down to parents' beliefs and behaviors that influence their children. Let me give you one example of that. Um, and all of you who are parents um, may have experienced something like this, where on a, on a Wednesday morning, for no reason, a child gets up and says, um, I have a stomach ache and I don't want to go to school. And often parents will say, well, you know, OK, uh, I guess you can stay home and, you know, we're going to work or we're busy. So, yeah, OK, OK, OK. And it, it just kind of gets lost in the shuffle. Well, in a few minutes, I'm going to share with you um, something that hopefully will help put this into context. I want you to think about that story. I want you to think about kids who, for whatever reason, make decisions about attendance to school. Parents, um, if your mornings in your home were like our mornings, you know, everyone's running around, wet hair, buses coming, blowing the horn, grabbing lunch, all kinds of things going on. Um, not a lot of time to think and make decisions. And so families are going to base decisions on what they know. Children's academic attitudes are shaped by their families. The greater the family is invested and knowledgeable about their children's learning, the more likely children improve academically. The question is, can we influence that? Can we influence um, a parent's knowledge about education? Absolutely. Absolutely. We can impress upon them uh, the why of education, why something is important. Not that, not that it's just important, but why. If we provide families better context, um, we can see better results. So the more that we promote efficacy, the reason why I put, the, put it back in this presentation as a reminder, 
The degree to which we can promote better efficacy and empower families to have a role in their child's education, the more likely it is, is that we're going to improve their socialization. If we improve their socialization, their beliefs and their values and their behaviors and their understanding of education, they will then, regardless of who they are, they will then transfer that to their children. I'm going to finish that attendance story in just a few minutes. Now, if you've been in one of my workshops, um, you probably have taken this test, but I have never given this test on a webinar. And so uh, I'm going to give you a scenario. And when I say go, I want you to go to the chat room and I want you to type what your answer is. And I'm going to look at the chat for five or 10 seconds to see what the see what the different kinds of answers we get. OK, so here is a scenario. It'll be pretty, pretty clear. Let's say uh, that they're, um, uh, we're back before COVID. Um, you know, we're back where, when schools were open and things were, were normal. And let's say a family comes together for dinner. It rarely happens anymore. There's so much pulling families in different directions that suddenly they find themselves home for dinner. Mom is all excited because everyone she loves is in the same room. And dad decides that he wants to have a conversation with the kids about school. So he has to get their attention, which isn't easy. He finally gets their attention and he asks them this question. And when I ask you the question, I would like you to type into the chat box what you think the children's response is. Ready? So dad looks at the kids and he asks this question. Hey, what did you do in school today? And they answered. Type your answer into the chat box. <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. I've never seen 566 answers exactly the same. Uh, incredible. Nothing, of course. Uh, didn't do anything in school. Okay, here comes the second question. Ready? Get your hand. Get your hands on that chat button. Get your hands on the keyboard because you got to answer a second question. Question number two, dad, you know, undaunted by the first question, looks at mom for support. Mom's like, you know, you don't hear me asking the kids stupid questions. You start it, you finish it. So dad asks the second question. Ready? Do you guys have any homework? Type in what you think the kid's answer is. Do you have any homework? And the answer is... <laughs> Oh my gosh, you are all brilliant. Look at that. No, <laughs> nothing and no. Oh my gosh, look at that. You all got it right. I've 577 people are logged on to this and 577 people get an A. Congratulations. Um, those two questions we know, unfortunately, sometimes are the sum total of educational conversation in a home but it's also a reflection of family academic socialization. Let's go back to the child with who doesn't wanna to go to school. If your child comes home day after day, month after month, year after year and says, I did nothing in school and I don't have any homework. What is the likelihood that when they say they wanna miss a day, you're really going to fight against that? Probably not. Uh, some parents will, but a lot of parents will say, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it's everything from I don't want to argue with my child in the morning to I'm running late for work and I don't have time to argue with my child for whatever reason. OK, fine. But when families are socialized to the importance of learning, when they know more about what is happening in school now and why it's important to be there and what is going to happen as a result of that learning, instead of saying, fine, stay home. The answer changes to, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you go to school? And if you're still not feeling well, call me and I'll come and get you. The parent makes an extra effort to get the child to school. Why? Because we've socialized them to the importance of school. We've socialized them to the importance of that lesson. We've socialized them to what is happening with learning. You've heard me say before that we often... Um, <clears throat> we often have categories of family engagement that may or may not work may or may not be working well for us 
Look at that first bullet. Socialization shapes behaviors that have clear implications for student success or failure. It's not enough to say to someone, it's important that your child finishes their homework. Um, what's important is to begin to socialize people to what we're doing and why we're doing it and what impact it's gonna have on their child. Uh, authoritarian parenting is associated with maladaptive student learning outcomes. Now that's right from psychological research and I've got the references at the end of this, at the end of this presentation. But the reason why I shared that with you is that if all we ever do with families is to say, it's important that your child do this, it's important that your child do that, without ever really giving them an explanation or context or socializing them to what we do, we're actually adding a little bit to that authorita authoritarian parenting where the parent said, look, this is what you need to do, just do it. Do it, make sure you hand it in. Um, those those kinds those kinds of situations according to research are not the very best situations that we want to put our families or our students in in terms of the learning life and and their ability to learn in school family understanding of their role in learning was is associated with more positive outcomes family understanding and role in learning is wait for it efficacy having a role to begin with in learning not monitoring learning, not just sharing information with me, but engaging with me, involving me. In previous webinars, we talked about involved in planning, involved in, in execution of learning. Now more than ever, um, <clears throat> while students are trapped in their homes and families are trapped in their homes for the most part, what can we use? What the contextual environment of learning has changed how can we embed that in? Uh, how can we embed that into uh, the kind of things that we're trying to do to keep continuity in learning? That last bullet I put in a different color because there was another one of those points that I wanted you to ponder today, and that was: um, we're not going to determine uh, what happens when we transition back to school solely. Uh, what's happening now? is going to have a significant impact on what happens when schools open. So we have this golden opportunity right now to open the window and open the throw open the doors of learning and really allow parents a look, a look into our world. And, and I have to believe that the more we do that, the more we engage with them, the more we involve them, the more that we use terms like we instead of I or your child. I would say if you're sending lessons home to students or you're doing things via Zoom or computer, however you're, however you're doing it, and it's different from coast to coast, try to use we. This week we're doing this because Im immediately it says, okay, I'm as a parent, I'm part of it. I may not be able to be part of it this week. Maybe, maybe I'm one of those people who is a critical worker um, imagine a student whose parents are are both healthcare workers. Um, probably, you know, there's there's a lot of different uh, stressors on on families, a lot of trauma uh, on a lot of different families as a result of COVID. But we also have this golden opportunity. We have this ability to shape the context of learning so that families have a better idea. Families are almost looking behind the scenes of teaching and learning and what happens in school. Take a look at um, an idea. I, I was doing some writing the other day and uh, I wanted to share this notion with you. Specifically, um, when schools reopen, the issue will not be how much learning took place there's a lot of concern about um, students are going to fall behind or students are going to be behind several months in learning or how will we ever catch students up. There's a lot of focus on that conversation. <clears throat> My thinking is that I'm not so sure that's the big problem because teachers pretty much know how to do that. This is, this is a unique situation that we got into and we'll get out of it. I think the bigger issue is what has happened to student and family attitudes toward learning while we've been through this experience? And I saw somebody in the chat room saying, hopefully we'll never be through this experience again. Hopefully. 
But if we go through this experience and we come out of it and we haven't learned anything, and there's and and we haven't understood that there are ways in which we can connect with families on a deeper, more meaningful level, then I'm afraid that we may be in worse shape than we were before this all happened. Filling in missed learning is far easier than re-socializing students and families to the importance of school and schoolwork. Um, there's a lot of reports out there about what's happening and not happening with in terms of this uh, <clears throat> our efforts to remote learn, and we're not in control. Um, we're all going to do the very best we can, and we'll see where it all ends up. But if we take the time now to create learning opportunities for kids that can promote that socialization of families, chances are that while we still may have learning gaps and we still may have to catch up learning, and there's a lot that we're going to have to figure out when schools do reopen, we could actually improve the outlook towards school and learning and all of the things that we would like families uh, to understand and perhaps end up with more positive outcomes on the other side of this. So it's something, something to consider uh, as, we, as we move through. So how can we influence it? Um, let's talk about that. If you've been in previous webinars, uh, you've seen that we've come up with a checklist of things that teachers can think about when designing at-home learning. This efficacy checklist promotes the efficacy of families, but in the process of that also helps families to socialize toward the importance of learning. It's, um, you know, the other day we were talking about um, the main idea. I, uh, we were showing the example of the main idea but the, the lesson that the teacher had sent home assumed that a parent either knew what the main idea was or that the child was going to be able to be successful with the work without any kind of parental, in, uh, uh, parental support. But when we changed the lesson to say, remember that the main idea means this, suddenly we have helped that we've given the family a piece of information to promote their efficacy. We explained to them why the main idea is important and now they can have a role in helping their child. All of that, that whole process that I just explained, starts to promote socialization. Parents start to know more about why things are important. Their attitudes towards school start to change. Uh, if they've had a negative attitude, perhaps they had negative experiences themselves as students, for whatever reason, that starts to change. Or we can impact on a higher level the ability for families to be socialized to learning, which will result in them impart, imparting that on their children. And at the end of the day, that's really what we want to happen. So one way to do it is to design learning that meets uh, all or some of these criteria. Here's some other ideas. The context of learning. What does learning lead to and why is it important? Um, you've heard, you, I've used the uh, uh, example of the um, order of operations in algebra. Why, why does anybody need to know the order of operations? Who cares? Well, it actually is pretty important um, because your ability to solve algebraic equations is probably not going to be real good unless you understand the order of operations. And so uh, uh, I think that uh, if we can help families understand the context of learning, a bigger scheme of learning, they start to say, oh, I get it. Okay. So that's, that's why my child needs to do this. Because if you've got a child at home, they have great influence over their families as well when we're not there, as you well know. Um, and if the family doesn't have any context from us, then they're going to rely on their child as the sole conduit for information and the importance of learning. I don't think that's such a hot idea. Love kids, but I don't think I want them to be the sole focus of communication. Soliciting input from families about learning, getting their, getting their impact, uh, getting the results um, and responses to what has happened. Maybe next week uh, on Zoom, um, you have a parent coffee and you simply ask parents to tell you how it's going. Uh, tell, tell you anything they want you to know. 
get some feedback as to how things are happening in, in their homes in terms of the learning that you're providing and see if any ideas emerge that you might be able to incorporate in the next round of learning, however you're structuring that. And again, I know it's different in different schools. How do families feel about the experience with their own emotions will drive positive or negative socialization? Parents who are now very frustrated by what's happening, um, is that's that's going to drive the degree to which their socialization is positive or negative or happens at all. Um, if we can plan and work with them and not for them, um, we would have a better opportunity to promote that notion of socialization. Considering families as surrogate teachers and coaching them to success, more than just your child should do this, but more than here's what we're doing this week. Uh, here's what uh, uh, here's here's um, the purpose of our learning, and here's what you can do to assist uh, your child, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> A very different message from make sure your child does this, make sure your child does that. Um, and then I think I've talked about this before. Uh, I. Um, I want you to understand that I think it's my opinion, and I think this is coming true. Uh, the pace of learning has slowed. Uh, we can't we can't do what we would have done had kids been coming into our classrooms every day. So, I think if we know that there's stress there, then we want to relieve that stress. Um, we want to make sure that um, we don't cause any more stress than we're all under already just with the virus and all of the things that have impacted our lives. Here are some of the references um, that I shared, uh, some of the work that I got today. And if you, you will, you'll have an opportunity to have this uh, presentation. Um, we will also be making a PDF of these slides. You'll have an opportunity to have those slides, uh, those as well. Um, but if you want to pick up your phone and, and take a picture, you can read more about family academic socialization. Um, <clears throat> it's a pretty, it's a pretty broad, it's a pretty deep uh, uh, concept. Um, I chose to tackle it for one of the webinars because it fits very well with the kind of work that we're trying to do right now in that in as much as um, parents and families are directing learning. So how can we impact that so that there is some semblance of continuity that we can maintain learning until such time as schools reopen? If we can promote their efficacy, then we can also promote their socialization. And when we promote their socialization, their child socialization, um, you know, the famous question of why do I need to know this? Uh, suddenly there's a better answer to that question. Uh, I don't feel well, I don't wanna go to school today. You know, I don't wanna do this stuff today. Can you imagine in homes now where kids are, you know, they have all the kinds of home distractions and families are trying to focus them in on learning and, and using schedules. And some families are doing good, some creative things. Uh, all of that to say that this notion of socialization, the beliefs and values that we have, the beliefs and values that families have and how we can impact their knowledge so that their knowledge impacts their child um, is uh, really why we, why we tackled this topic today. Uh, we gave you some examples of how we can use that in teaching. We can give you some examples of how we can use that in the relationships with families, uh, in what we talk to with families and how we communicate with families. Um, we're going to be doing a future webinar on communication and language, specific language um, that seems to be a bit more conducive to family academic socialization, family efficacy. Uh, we'll be talking about that. Uh, we just announced our next series of webinars and we're going to continue doing this uh, as long as uh, you guys are interested and in, in, um, um, are interested in learning more about these topics. Uh, we're also interested in knowing what you want to know as well. So if you have anything, any specific questions or topics that you think might be appropriate for a future webinar, please, please let us know. Um, before we leave, I want to draw your attention to um, uh, 
you'll see that uh, a, a button just clicked. You should be able to see uh, on the right-hand side in your panel, um, I'm, I'm inviting you to take uh, a little bit of a look at uh, some other things that, that we do. And um, I want to try to see if I can't uh, see if I can't take you there right now. If you go to our website, uh, uh, you'll see a section <clears throat> that says online learning. If you click on online learning, you can see some of the things that we're doing. Uh, we have <clears throat> some testimonials of some folks who've worked with us and then an explanation of some of the things that we're doing. All of our work now that we've done for years is now all online. So uh, we hope that um, <clears throat> if there's something that we can do to assist you, uh, that's an interesting screen that I got. I don't know what yours looks like, but mine looks weird. Um, Anyway, I think we're having a little technical uh, technical weirdness, but uh, we're just about done for today anyway. So I wanted to share a little bit about our website. I invite you to go and poke around there uh, if you have any questions for us, if you have any ideas for future webinars. We've got some ideas coming up next Tuesday, the 28th. Uh, we're going to be talking with some, some people just like you who are out in the field, who are doing some work with families and they're gonna share with us what seems to be resonating with all of our different kinds of families and uh, some of the challenges that they're facing as well. So we hope you'll tune in for that. I, I always think as much as I enjoy uh, uh, prevent, uh, providing as much information as I can, <clears throat> I know it's valuable to you and you can hear directly from your colleagues as well. And we think we've got some folks lined up who are pretty good at it uh, and we'll share the truth. We'll share things that are working and things that they thought perhaps uh, we're going to work that didn't work so well. Future webinars, we're gonna be delving into social emotional learning. Uh, we'll have some expertise join us uh, for that conversation. And then as I said, we're also gonna be talking about the language of communication that we use during this period of remote learning as well. So all of that, um, all of that to say that uh, I very much appreciate you uh, hanging in there with these webinars. Remember that you'll get an email with the webinar, the PDF, uh, <clears throat> and a certificate uh, so that if you want uh, uh, something for your professional development folder, we certainly will give you that as well. Um, that's, uh, I'm just checking to see if, uh, um, no, nope, that's it. So I think that's everything that we want. We're done a few minutes early today, which I'm sure you, I'm sure you have, uh, um, uh, some other things that you can you can fill the time up with. But I, again, appreciate you being here. Thank you for all that you're doing. I hope that you remain well. I hope that you remain safe. Uh, <clears throat> and along with you, we'll all just pray that we get through this and we can get back to some semblance of normal as soon as possible. Uh, thank you for all of the hard work that you put in for all of our kids and families. Uh, very much appreciate it. Extremely inspiring to us. So Keep up the good work, and hopefully we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a good one, folks. Bye-bye.
Everybody, we have a few minutes. Uh, I know that a lot of folks have moved off because uh, they have their appointments, but I just want to let you know that the webinar is going to run for a few more minutes. I'm here. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. You can just put them in the chat box and uh, I'll respond to you. And if not, uh, please feel free to email me uh, uh, or um, um, tune in again for future uh, webinars next Tuesday. And then you can also sign up uh, and find a way to see all of our past webinars as well. Today's webinar uh, was just a little short of an hour. Uh, and so it is over. It's going to be as soon as this, as soon as we're done today, the recording process starts about 24 hours or so. And we'll be getting you all the information about um, uh, how to access this webinar and how to access the PDF and also how to access your certificate of completion if that's something you're interested in. So I'm here. I'm going to, um, I'm kind of watching the uh, chat room. Um, if you did not receive a previous email, uh, you should have you should have received an email if you signed up for a previous webinar. If you signed up for a previous webinar and you did not receive an email, please let me know that. Write to me at steve at drsteveconstantino.com and we'll make sure we get you the information. The certificates, once again, which will be a PDF for you. As soon as we get the site done after today, we'll send it to you. You'll be able to click on it, download it, put your name on it, and put it in your file. So it should be, it'll be a document for you on that site uh, when, it, when we're ready, usually about a day or so. So anyway, folks, um, if you, we still have a minute or two if you have any questions. If not, thank you very much for attending. I'm still here. I'm going to shut the video off, but I'll still be here for three minutes until the video itself clicks, uh, until the webinar itself clicks itself off. Um, and then, of course, I'm always available to you uh, uh, for um, uh, questions through through email and through other other ways. Uh, Kathleen, you asked, this, is there a certificate for each webinar? Yes. Um, if you've not gotten the previous emails, write to me, Steve at Steve, uh, Steve at drsteveconstantino.com, and we'll make sure we get you access to those previous webinars so that you can watch them and, and get the certificate. I didn't realize that we had a friend from Australia here today, so thank you for coming. Um, um, I had an opportunity to work in Australia several years ago and loved my time there and always look forward to any opportunities to come back. Uh, I was working um, in the uh, uh, Melbourne, outside of the greater Melbourne area when I was there uh, and really very fascinated with your country and just loved the people. And we did a lot of great work with family engagement. So thank you for coming today. Really much appreciate it. I'm watching the questions. I'm not ignoring you. I'm looking at the camera, but I'm, I'm making sure that I watch the questions too. And then I don't know how many of you, but I'm at the age where I have to look through the bottom of my glasses to see something close up. I just want to let you know that. So in case I look like a, a goofball, it's because I want to make sure I can see it. Uh, it looks like that's about all the questions. Again, if you have any, please email me or, or get in touch with us. If, if for any reason you have any kind of concerns from past webinars or you don't get what you want for this webinar, you can always write to us, info at Dr. Steve Constantino, Steve at Dr. Steve Constantino. We'll make sure that we get you the information. The purpose of all of this is to share it and share it away. So uh, that's why we're doing it. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great day. Stay well.